Welcome back to our parent training series. In this video, I will be providing an overview on some healthy parenting practices for you and your family. Remember, in the understanding behavior section, we learned the ABCs of behavior and that we can change behavior by changing consequences for behavior. Now we take those principles and apply them to working with your child. We will be discussing several healthy parenting practices that will help you create an environment that promotes the behavior you want to see and reduces reinforcement for the behaviors that you don't want to see. We will be discussing three main healthy parenting practices. First, let's talk about ways that you can get yourself and your home prepared to better manage your child's behavior. Next, we'll discuss some ways to get your child to engage in more appropriate or good behavior. And finally, we'll look at ways to promote better listening and following directions from your child. So first, let's talk about getting prepared. The first step in getting prepared means to get yourself ready to be the best you can be for your child. Part of this step is making sure you are ready to be a good example for your children. Children learn how to behave by watching the people around them, and especially by watching their parents. It's important to keep this in mind and use it as a way to teach important skills for your child. If you show frustration and anger in certain situations, your kids may be likely to imitate this behavior. On the other hand, if you are able to model patience and good behavior, they'll be likely to do that instead. The next step in getting prepared is getting organized. It can be really helpful to have a set, consistent, daily routine for your family. For example, during the school week or work week, have your children wake up at the same time every day, eat breakfast at the same time, go to daycare, take baths, naps, and eat, and so forth at the same time. Toddlers love routines because the predictability of knowing what comes next makes them feel safe and secure. And that's certainly true at nighttime when calmness is an essential ingredient for peaceful toddler sleep. For example, how would you apply the consistency rule to going night-night? First, begin earlier than you think you should, in other words, before the first yawn, and start getting ready at the same time every night. Children tend to get hyperactive when they're tired, and the last thing you need after a long day is a wrestling match with your wiggly one. And keep it calm, too. No giggle monster games, no rough housing, and last, you're the leader. You can give the toddler choices. Shall we read a book or listen to lullabies? But don't let your pint-sized protester call the shots. The best routine lasts about an hour, tops. And that includes everything from bath to the final goodnight kiss. Things to include in your toddler's bedtime routine include a bath, getting into pajamas, a bedtime snack, brushing teeth, and saying goodnight to everyone followed by a bedtime story, a hug and a kiss, and then lights out. The important thing is to follow the routine consistently. These routines become the antecedents, the A in the ABCs of behavior. Going to sleep is the behavior, and a good night's sleep is the consequence for everyone. However, if your routine changes frequently and unexpectedly, your kiddo may not know what behaviors you want to see and might up doing the wrong ones. Parenting is hard, and there's absolutely no one that is a perfect parent. Don't worry if you're not perfect. However, consistency is really important to managing behavior. Consistency allows your child to know what to expect and have their behavior follow suit. Some ways to be consistent are to make sure you follow through with expectations. If you make a rule, be consistent and follow through with it. When you deliver a consequence, whether it is a reinforcer 
or a Punisher be consistent over time. If you want to see positive behaviors, the consequences for those behaviors need to be predictable and consistent. Your child is more likely to eat her dinner or to go to bed easily if she knows that she will always get a reinforcer for doing so. But if she isn't sure that she will get a reinforcer because sometimes she gets one and sometimes she doesn't, she might be less likely to do the skill. The idea of consistency doesn't mean you have to be on all the time. You can pick one thing to be consistent with or some part of your day to practice on. Again, the goal is progress and not perfection. Next, we'll talk about how to promote good behavior. The idea behind this approach is that often children will misbehave because they're bored or there is nothing to do. Enriching the environment helps to give them appropriate activities to do and makes it less likely that they'll display inappropriate behavior. To create a positive environment, a good starting point is to try and make your home a place your children want to be. Make your home a fun and rewarding environment. Make sure to provide plenty of play activities for your children to engage in. Have activities available during unstructured parts of the day to help your children stay busy and entertained. At first, there may only be a small number of activities that your child enjoys. Taking time to show them new activities can help expand on what they enjoy doing. You can provide lots of attention and praise and other things they like when they show interest in a new activity. Over time, this will increase what they want to play with and do. Another way to support positive behavior is to plan regular outings with your family. Planning regular outings will give your children something exciting to look forward to and will help your house stay a fun and novel place. These outings can be simple and low cost, such as taking a walk around the block, going to the park, or getting a special treat from the local grocery store. Another helpful strategy is to stay close to your children. Remember, your children love your attention. The closer you are, the more influence you can have on his or her life. So what do we mean by stay close? You can stay physically close by being around your children more. You can also do this by providing lots of physical attention to your child throughout the day. Give your child frequent hugs, a quick shoulder pat or an arm rub. Physical attention can be very rewarding for children. So staying physically close will help you provide a reinforcing environment. You can also stay close by talking more to your children. This can be as simple as reading a story aloud, making comments about what your child is doing, or engaging them in small talk. Ask questions that you know they can answer. If your child makes any attempt to interact with you, make sure to reinforce this behavior by praising and letting them know how excited you are to be talking with them. If you stay physically and verbally close to your children, you can make yourself a person that your children want to be around and interact with. You can make yourself and your attention a huge reinforcer for your child, even more than you already are. Overall, providing lots of attention to your child while playing a game or doing an activity with them will make that activity so much more fun for them. Your child might be more willing to do an activity if you are able to do it with them. Now that you have a positive environment and are ready to give lots of positive attention, you are ready to catch your child being good. That means you'll be reinforcing or rewarding good behavior. As parents, it's easy to notice when our child is doing something that we don't like but it may be more difficult to notice when your child is behaving well. So, the first step is identifying some good behavior you want to reinforce. Can you think of a few behaviors that you want your child to do more often? 
Once you have a few in mind, make a goal for yourself to start reinforcing these behaviors. It's important that you are setting reasonable goals for your child as well. You'll want to start with behaviors that you know your child can do first before moving on to bigger goals. This may include reinforcing small steps toward the ultimate behavior you want to see. For example, if you ask your child to try a new food, even just a single taste of a single pea is a way to start working toward the goal of eating that new food. Tomorrow, try two peas. The next step is delivering the reinforcer. Like children of all ages, toddlers seek approval from their parents and caregivers. Your toddler is much more likely to repeat good behavior when you reinforce it with praise or rewards. Providing positive attention also decreases the likelihood that your toddler will misbehave to get attention. Whether your toddler is using gentle touches while petting the dog or working hard to build a tower with blocks, reinforce those positive behaviors with praise. Praise your toddler's good behavior immediately. Get down on your child's level. Look him in the eye and say, nice job putting your toy in the toy box when you were done playing with it. Avoid generic phrases such as, good boy. Instead, label exactly which behavior you are praising. Smile while you're praising your toddler and use a positive tone of voice to reinforce your message. Praise your toddler many times throughout the day to show him or her which behaviors you appreciate. Reinforce good behavior with your body language. A hug or a hi-fi provides positive reinforcement for a job well done. Clapping and cheering also show that you approve of your toddler's behavior. Provide your toddler with a tangible reward to reinforce good behavior. Toddlers often respond well to small tokens of appreciation, such as stickers. Other rewards may include things like extra playtime or a trip to the park. While outdoor play motivates some children, it won't motivate all children. However, choose rewards that your toddler will enjoy. Now, all kids at one time or another will display some inappropriate or bad behavior. This is a normal part of childhood. However, a child with autism or one displaying signs of autism may be more likely to engage in inappropriate behavior because they use it as a way to communicate their wants and needs with others. Inappropriate behavior happens because it serves a purpose for the child. Sometimes, some of our reactions as caregivers may actually work to reinforce the bad behavior and make it happen more often. The good news is that we have the power to change our behavior to stop their behavior. If a child knows what good behavior to do, but is doing bad behavior anyway, stop and redirect them to the good behavior. For example, if your little one is throwing a toy, even though you have had them practice putting it down nicely, in that moment, you can take away the toy. Give it back when they say please. Another way to ensure that you do not accidentally reinforce bad behavior is to actively ignore the bad behavior. We call this planned ignoring. Planned ignoring involves briefly removing all attention from your misbehaving child. Removing your attention will ensure that you do not accidentally reinforce the bad behavior with attention. Here are the steps to planned ignoring. First of all, stay calm. If you are feeling upset, do your best to hide it and keep a neutral tone. Next, remove all attention from your child. To help you remove your attention, it is helpful to pay attention to something or someone else. Pretend to be absorbed in some other activity. Pick up a book and begin to read. Start organizing the shelf. Strike up an interesting conversation with your spouse. If you find it difficult to do this, you can consider leaving the room, but only if your child is safe. If your child is not in any immediate danger, it is okay for you to leave the room, but be sure to stay close by. Once your child is calm and is no longer doing the bad behavior, 
bring your attention back to her and redirect her to an appropriate behavior. The last strategy we'll talk about is used to promote better listening for your child. Toddlers are terrible listeners. This is just a fact. Part of it is because they aren't developmentally ready to internalize the things that you're telling them. It's natural. But that makes it necessary to repeat yourself and to keep it simple. Here are six ways to help your toddler listen. First, get close. It is important to get down to their level because the closer you get, the more they have to pay attention. It also shows what you're asking is important enough to make an effort. Next, get quiet. If you are close and talking quietly, suddenly your request seems a bit more serious. This also works if they are in the process of a meltdown. Stay calm and keep quietly interjecting. Eventually, they'll match you. Next, keep it positively simple. Your toddler is just starting to figure out directions. So the more you talk, the less they'll understand. Keep your request as simple and positive as possible. Instead of, you know you aren't supposed to run in the kitchen, say, walk please. And give options. Many activities are mandatory. Getting dressed to go outside, for instance, is not optional. That said, some of these mandatory activities can still be packed with choices. Do you want the red or the green shirt? Do you want to put on your socks first or your pants? These options will give your kid a sense of empowerment and collaboration. Next, be a good listener. A good way to get your child to listen is to model good listening. That means when they're laying it all out there, you are looking at them and paying attention. You aren't trying to tell them their thoughts or ideas are invalid, and you're helping them to name their emotions. The last way to increase listening is to use a tool often referred to as grandma's rule, or what is also known as the PREMAC principle. We'll call it grandma's rule. Using grandma's rule is when you make a desired item or activity available only after your child completes the desired activity. For example, you can have ice cream for dessert if you eat all your broccoli. In this example, completing the less preferred activity, eating broccoli, will be reinforced with the desired item, ice cream, afterwards. When using grandma's rule, be sure to follow the guidelines for delivering instructions, simply and clearly. You can use this technique to get your child to do a behavior that he doesn't enjoy or doesn't want to do. By making access to a highly preferred item or activity contingent upon completing that undesired activity, you are creating motivation for your child. He or she will be more motivated to complete the undesired activity because he or she will know that he can only have access to the fun stuff once the hard part's done. Again, when using rules like this with your children, it is important to follow through with the consequences. If your child eats his broccoli, make sure you give him the ice cream. But if he does not eat his broccoli, do not give him the ice cream. So, let's recap. The three main healthy parenting practices we discussed will help you get prepared, promote good behavior, and promote better listening at home. These strategies include modeling or showing your kids what to do, enriching the environment, and providing consistent, high-quality attention and rewards for good behavior. These strategies may seem overwhelming at first, but we want to stress the importance of progress, not perfection. It's better to try out one strategy somewhat consistently than to expect to do everything perfectly all the time. Nobody can do that. Please remember, the information in this program is not meant to diagnose or treat. It should not take the place of consultation with a qualified healthcare professional.